the fun online teaching and learning channel yeah, I'm glad to see you back here so what we're doing in the series is we're talking about uh, soft skills and how to acquire them how do we learn them and how do we improve them please if you didn't watch my introduction to soft skills uh, sessions video please do that it's two parts and now in session two we are learning about how to create the slides using PowerPoint please watch part one this will be the part two but I want to make a little summary of what we did. Oh, by the way, these are some of my references that I've read for you. And I am summarizing these on my sessions. This is a session that th there will be many sessions uh, that I also uh, describe in uh, introduction videos. So uh, this will be like 10 or 15 sessions that I had will be posted every week. So what did we do? Uh, we may had a discussion about how do you prepare yourself we listen to you and then how i mentioned how do i prepare myself and i recommended a systems perspective both a time sequence and also a, a holistic perspective to the presentations and today basically we're gonna go detail on how to use powerpoint and how to convey our message better to our audience we'll do a hands-on activity just a quick recap, uh, my recommendation to you is using systems perspective, which means when you're tasked with a presentation, you gotta know your audience. And please, for the details, look at the previous video, which is part one, soft skills uh, presentation. Also, you also need to, uh, you know, think about your content, how to deliver your content, okay? Knowing your audience will affect your content a lot. And also uh, think about where is this presentation gonna happen okay the logistics the mechanics the soft uh, the place okay so these are all important uh, if you will lags or a successful presentation the success lies in between okay think about that so you you studied your audience you know exactly what's their motivation why they are there for, to listen to you and you created a great slide presentation with animations with the key message repeating and everything you dress for success but somehow you couldn't find the building you couldn't find the address you were so much late that your presentation time passed right so you couldn't present it that's a disaster right so all the work you did previously went to garbage so every presentation you gotta study those three at least my other uh, recommendation to you is recognize and prepare for phases which means your presentation doesn't really start when you really start presenting it right from PowerPoint slide one and it doesn't end when you finished you know the story in your last slide right there's a lot to do previously and there's a lot to do right after your presentation and there are things you need to do a few weeks or a few months after the presentation okay that's why the audience the mechanics and the content is very very important so this is it's time now to talk about pretty good ideas okay so first of all you have to know your subject okay what i want you to know is uh, study your subject a lot if you don't know your subject you will not be able to answer the questions okay so or sometimes i see this so if there's 20 slides 10 slides is done by one person and the other 10 slides by uh, done by the other team member and then somehow you know one of them doesn't arrive or feels bad and uh, not present then you need to you know completely present all the 20 slides so there you really need to study and rehearse the other section of the material okay so know your subject really well 7 to 7 rule is uh, you know they assigned to say uh, you gotta have seven lines and seven words in one slide okay that's also what I'm trying to do in my slides this is to you know uh, not to lose the attention of the, of the uh, listeners okay usually the rule of thumb is two slides per minute so you can go by this two way if you have a time limit let's say you have to present 30 minutes okay you gotta have at most the most 60 slides or sometimes you have if you have 10 slides and really the time depends on you then you're gonna see you know I got 10 slides so five minutes will be okay for me 
but my recommendations to you is always if you have uh, 100 minutes to present 25% of this uh, should go to the the questions okay so if you let's say you have 60 points uh, 60 minutes okay so in out of 60 minutes you gotta make a presentation you gotta pre prepare your presentation for 45 minutes and 15 minutes for the questions okay so rule of thumb two slides per minute always have a title slide like I have in these lectures okay in these sessions so always have a title slides this this brings everybody you know draws everybody's attention uh, sometimes you will have people in the wrong room okay so when they see your title they will uh, understand they are in the wrong room right so title is always good abstain from mysterious shapes and figures which means sometimes you know if you're talking about rivers have a river right if you're talking about basketball have a basketball right in there so but the mysterious shapes and figures please abstain from them because they are uh, much more distracting the audience and also animation uh, like in this slide right I'm using animation but I'm, uh, it's it's uh, it says a nice uh, flow with my narrative with my talk so I'm hoping it's not really disturbing you but uh, if you watch my previous video I started with the animation going everywhere that is really distracting and really conveying no no message right so unnecessary animation is really bad especially if you're not if your talk is not synchronized okay you don't need to show off your PowerPoint skills okay so avoid unrelated picture and photo as well like if you're talking about basketball you, you know don't have a cat right you don't have a dog picture or cat picture right you have, a, you have to have a, maybe a famous basketball player or you know, national uh, maybe NBA uh, logo or maybe uh, a ball like basketball right something like that choose a background that makes sense my favorite is white as you can see in my slide uh, back with white you can do anything right sometimes I see really like pessimistic black you know very uh, dark blue or pink background that really distract my attention and it's it's real difficult to design such slides okay always choose a background preferably choose one of the backgrounds that is already set in uh, in the in the slide in the powerpoint okay keep text short flexibility uh, have a flexible if you keep your text short you will have a flexibility to for your talk purpose right uh, if you have the full text right there, you're kind of slave to it and you want to read all of them, right? And, you'll, and you will see from audience, hey, please don't pass, I'm not done reading. Well, hopefully you're not expecting them to read it. So don't put a lot of text, right? What we want is from audience is to listen to us, right? Then you will be free of burden of reading and trying to read all of them off your slides or your paper, okay? This will also help your time management okay you will be a master of your slide not a slave and this is uh, the same for the listeners as well they don't have to read you they can focus on you focus on your mimics focus on your hands and you know focus on the props instead of trying to read the slides so here's an example right I, I mean can you please comment down below how many wrong things you see well there's nothing right special <laughs> right I mean you don't like animating everything why there is this much color why this is red why it's you know why this is bald why there is no underline where there's underline everywhere what is manok right I never saw this one so if you use any anime uh, any acronym please use it openly like the long form for the first time this text is not talking about cats so why do you have this cat right and look at the background look at this background in the slide and look at that background right it's really difficult so look at the bullets so bullets is inconsistent font font is inconsistent uh, the, the big the, you know some of them are small some of them are big the text uh, yeah so that's that's a bad example right please refrain doing this how about this one logistic regression model of a system well I don't see anything here right the background is good but I can't really read those and I don't know what are those so probably someone you know ha half an hour into the presentation sitting in the back you know will not understand anything okay 
So after these examples, let's continue with the PowerPoint skills too. So if you have a copyright, uh, always write them down, okay? Uh, if you're using someone else's, please give credits, cite them, okay? Usually there's a few uh, citation techniques, APA, uh, Chicago, MLA, so learn one of them or whichever your company is using, uh, learn that one and then use it, okay? Stealing someone's ideas is stealing someone's money, okay? So don't steal others' ideas. Always give a, give a citation. References. Uh, always have a references. Like I started this slide, you know, this presentation with showing my references, right? Usually we show it at the end. So have your references ready and always cite your resources. Always have a conclusion, right? You always have an introduction and always have a conclusion, summary, or takeaway. So what... I want you to understand, to remember as takeaways as if the audience forgets everything about your presentation, okay? What do you want them to remember? What do you want them to, you know, tell other people about your presentation? What do you want them to apply which technique, okay? What do you want them to remember? What is your success criteria? For example, my success criteria in these soft skill sessions is if my audience, you know, if my uh, subscribers, if my listeners, viewers, if they do one or two technique and apply them, that'll be my success criteria, okay? I will feel successful. Do you have anything before doing, before uh, the, the presentation? For example, think about it. What can be one of the tasks before the presentation? Like I said, presentation doesn't start the moment you start talking, right? What is some pretest? You may be bringing some props, some textbooks. Does the library have that one? Do you want to purchase something? Do you want to bring your product for them, like free promotion, right? Or do you have to print out any activities? Or do you want to print out the slides, right? These are all important things to think about before you talk, even talk in the real presentation. What are the things post-test, right? If you are selling a product, do you want to give them your contact information, or do you uh, do you can you do you want to tell them like, hey, if you are interested in this product, please stay in the room, and I can talk to you in detail, right? If you are interested buying, right? So there are things that post that maybe uh, you will tell them, hey, once we have a prototype, if you are interested, I'm gonna you know email or call you with the prototype information or flyer or, or specifications, so. Mm -hmm. You may tell them, hey, please stay afterwards so I can give you a call, right? Or I can get your email or, or uh, phone number. Be ready to summarize in one or two slides, okay? So what do I mean? Okay, that's something out of my life experience. So sometimes I have 10 slides, right? And this is a project I have been working, let's say, in 10 months, right? CEO tells us hey, you know, uh, we are in the agenda for the meeting, and then all of a sudden he or she tells us, you know what, I want to listen to your project. You have been working hard. Uh, I know you work for the presentation. You studied a lot, but I only have two minutes. Can you summarize it with one or two, one or two slides, okay? We cannot just say, hey, we can summarize this. This topic is important. You know, I have been working for, for this 10 months, and I have 10 slides. No. What we should do is we should always have a highlight slide, one or two. And then if, if there is less time, then we need to, you know, open up like, okay, I will only tell you, uh, show you a six slide and seven slide, right? Or your conclusion or your takeaway or your data analysis result, conclusion, whatever, right? We got to be ready for these kind of uh, situations and we need to be flexible and ad adaptable. Excellent. Remember, if you, you may need to print out some things. So before the task, just know if the building has a printer, if it's for money, because you wanna, if, if, if it's some, some other city or, or some other building or another company or a conference room, you may not find a printer. So, or it may be uh, expensive to print many, many pages. So make sure you have printed them before you leave your home company and then you will bring your uh, printers with you, uh, printouts with you. Avoid flashy animations like I started this presentation, especially session one, okay? This slide has animations too. 
and right but it is so synchronized with my top point so you don't even see it consistent font colors and bullet we already saw an example so for example this is a slide right I think we can have those slides maybe just as an example in your slide right but just to show you how complex your uh, situation is how dynamic is the situation is uh, but you don't really want them to see or read or anything like that right for example for this slide if you have this I think the key message is what we're doing is really complex and it's not easy right that's the message otherwise you really don't want your customer or the participant right audience listeners to understand what is this rectangular or what's going on here right what is this yellow background and you don't want them to really understand those kind of stuff right this is maybe the message here is it's very difficult right yeah that one is okay and sometimes we use these slides to print out a big canvas and put on the wall which is also acceptable how about this one yeah executive summary but it doesn't look like a summary right well at least this picture is you know related to wireless market but if I'm in the sitting in the back row or the classroom the conference room I wouldn't read this and I would just text to my friend right I mean that's not something that I can read I can't even see it because it's so small so there is a key message right and presenter will also be slave for this message okay so let's continue with the powerpoint skills typos no typo allowed no okay i have a typo here right that's deliberate so okay maybe one or no more okay just one typo in the whole presentation not not every slide one typo in the whole the, the entire presentation is okay but no more and that requires a lot of effort you know make sure you proofread your slides make sure you present them to someone so just be sure you don't have any typo because there's only a few words right seven lines and seven words so you gotta look at it again look at it again and look at it again use bullets properly and consistently effective conversion control slides and software how many times you had a powerpoint and it didn't open right we have still especially if it's an archive PowerPoint like has been used been used in your company like you know five years six years then uh, slides uh, the software updates but your PowerPoint doesn't update so maybe in the new conference room new meeting room new company you don't have that you know the maybe they updated the software but your PowerPoint is from old software so it doesn't really match right and then you can't open it's embarrassing okay that's why I say rehearse 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 and if you watch my previous uh, recording about this you will see that uh, when you are thinking about your content and physics you got to think about your software as well and slides okay well you can do whatever convenient for you to control your versions uh, and slides I usually do if I when I create it I put a like version one and then as I do more and edit and add more, uh, delete some slides, then I do version two, version three, version four, and I never delete the version one, okay? Because you may all, all, always wanna go back to the previous versions. Maybe you wanna use some of the slides right there, okay? Don't delete them, just after you submit, you know, present your version 66, maybe you keep that one and then delete others, okay? never ever use more time than allocated uh, for example in your interviews okay there will be they will tell you like okay you're gonna make a you know presentation to us especially if you are going on on, on site interview they will give you 60 minutes never ever use 61 minutes okay think about it this way if you use that one minute if there's you know 50 people in your listening to you actually you're using one minute time 50 so 50 minutes of the others okay that's kind of rude it's always good to stop before the allocated time which is again I want to repeat if it's 60 minute I would do 45 minutes presentation and not 15 minutes for the questions okay explain acronyms when first used so, so for example if you are saying United States right US uh, use the United States well United States is we know it right but how about NATO do you know what is NATO in the long long form right 
always it's good to explain uh, the first time. Rehearse everything. Rehearse everything, including the technology. Where is the screen? How is how does it open? Uh, does the mic has a battery? How do I recharge it? Uh, what do I bring? Uh, where is the LCD? How do I turn it on? Can we connect the Zoom? Is there a Zoom capability? If the audience wants to ask a question, where is the mic? Who's gonna bring the mic, right? This, these all go to content and physics of your presentation that I explained, right? Three perspectives, audience, study your audience, study your content, how are we gonna, you know, what's your message, what's your content, and third one is physics, and that this includes technology as well, okay? Rehearse everything. I, I would present my presentation to someone who doesn't know the topic, like anyone, like your friend, right? Just make them listen to you, and they will, they will look at your presentation uh, from scratch and they will give you uh, sincere feedback okay not don't expect them to give you like experts uh, like about the content and expert feedback but they will give you like if you're you know repeating your key messages how is your intonation your voice control you know you're swaying a lot you're walking a lot and all these things maybe typos one, right uh, so don't write long sentences to read we talked about this okay now please comment below and what do you see wrong in the slide well the only thing i see right here is uh, you know this background is cool but not this one the only thing i see good is how rivers are formed this looks good but even this one should be a question sentence right how are how are the rivers formed and question mark right even that is wrong but you know font wise background wise this looks good pictures kind of is relevant but why is it in the background i can't really read anything although the, they are white right so that is a bad example and this one it says community alignment uh, but i don't really like understand anything here right there's arrows going up going down circular arrows governments this line arrows uh, so it's really confusing okay let's continue with powerpoint skills four start strong in the beginning you know smile and start strong start with something that 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 they will be motivated okay a story maybe a joke joke is kind of uh, you know difficult to do i will usually avoid doing that because humor is even you are in the same culture it gets different from person to person so it will be different but start strong somehow smile say good morning right include agenda items people want to know what to expect in that in next 30 minutes next 60 minutes right so always include an agenda item for your uh, file name, give a searchable and meaningful file name. As I said, your presentation task is not over when you stop talking, okay? You have to archive this, you have to put it in a folder in your computer, maybe a Google Drive, OneDrive, somewhere, so that next year maybe you will do the same thing, so you may pull it up and then tweak it a little bit, make it yours, and then, uh, you know, you're, instead of starting stretch from scratch, you can you know way ahead start your presentation by the way share with others and mark up your presentation right if edison when he found invented the bulb if he just kept it for himself then we would be still in dark until someone else would you know invent the bulb but but uh share with others be proud of your work and this requires a lot of uh, effort as well so if you're proud of your work share with others and someone will tell you know will connect you and you know ask you to make that presentation or maybe a manager will call you and you know ask for a presentation maybe somebody will contact you and say oh this is a great idea you know can you do this for my company and stuff so when you create a something when you put a, put some effort in something make sure you market it you present it i don't know if you do this with uh, email you know campaign or uh, you know with a share on twitter linkedin social media so just be proud of your work and archive it okay i archive it in your computer in your company computer and also somewhere online like google drive OneDrive, whatever your company is using rrr is <clears throat> what is that write down comment below yeah rr is uh reduce reuse recycle 
okay when you have a task always ask around or look at the folders of your company your personal folders and see if you did this before right like uh, my recommendation do you searchable and meaningful find them so for example it's a product demonstration in you know in a university let's say uh, or in a conference so type this and see if your company has any anything like uh, related to that right reduce reuse recycle so reuse it reuse it and if it's uh, and recycle it if you can do it right it's better than starting off from scratch and this gives also documentation in the company which is great use the speaker notes section uh, if you want to use you know if you want to write text please don't write it on the slides use the speaker notes section uh, it, you know the audience don't see it but you can uh, when you're rehearsing the slides you can easily use it so that's a great tool that i always use extra slides that's my recommendation to you uh, I usually have, uh, I would like to have 10% of my slides being in extra slides. For example, if I'm presenting 10 slides, I would like to have one or two extra slides just in case for the questions, okay? Uh, it's when you're doing a presentation, because you are the expert, just think about what questions can arise and then now you can uh, be prepared for the, like, the maybe important questions. Maybe you have a data that you might use in case somebody asks right so these kind of things check this example well i like how it's related the picture at tax like it's motor car and there's a car but other than that almost everything is wrong in this slide right and this one uh social business power map it doesn't look like a map to me i'm kind of lost in this okay so use uh, brevity is important in your slides remove redundancy for example this one is too long and redundant but when you rewrite it that's better i don't see a roadmap here again again this this slides like the governance slide that i have a few minutes ago it's good to print a big and put it on a wall right uh, yeah, that one is good. Or in this, let's say you can just emphasize something and then you continue with other slides, right? Just to give the biggest, biggest perspective. Other than that, uh, that kind of slides doesn't interest anybody, okay? Use active words, uh, active voice and strong words instead of the feed through was composed. Rather than that, rewrite the sentence and say the feed through contained, right? active voice is always better instead of uh, passive voice that's a great youtube video please go to the dan mcmillan Mac and life after death but by poor pain i don't want to play that here because i don't know if this is going to be a copyright issue but uh, you can definitely I'll, i'm going to put the link below so you can watch it it's so fun it's short it's it's so fun okay what is the takeaway here in this session well always think it is think your presentations from a systems perspective your job doesn't start when you start talking and when you finish talking there's a pre post and after okay always think of your audience content and physics get it proofread by someone get you know always rehearse it rehearse it to someone expert and a non-expert so they can give you sincere feedback know how to use software you know if if you need a zoom do you know how to use zoom or ms office or any tool like that so make sure you study the software too be positive and engaging you are there for them right for example i'm here for you be confident you know the best the topic in the room so it's okay you are the expert be confident and always follow up always follow up it's not as easy as it seems and there's a lot of work to go okay there's a lot of work to be put in this uh, presentations but you will be successful if you really do one or two to start doing one or two one of the one or two or maybe three or what i recommended because uh only reading only listening doesn't help in soft skills you gotta really apply slowly okay when you apply you'll feel more confident and you'll see the power of soft skills 
just before I let you go please subscribe to my channel and notify uh, you know turn on the notifications so you will be notified from my next uh, slides all right next time we're gonna talk about uh, how to present the slides that we created I will focus on the presentation side of stuff not in the slides but what you need to do when presenting thank you so much for listening to me today bye bye